Um, what a fantastic day it's been so far. Thank you all so much for telling us all the exciting things that you've been doing. I feel certainly like I've built up a kind of bank of stories from all corners of the world about the brilliant things which you're getting on with here and now to try and shift your food systems to deliver some of those better outcomes that we all want for our citizens. Um, before I get stuck in, I wanted to just also say a huge thank you to Leila. I won't have, we won't have another opportunity to thank her because she's doing the thank yous at the very end. But I think we all know she's been an incredible uh, host and chair for us today. So thank you very much, Leila. You've been really So um, you'll probably have gathered that um, at the Food Foundation we're really, really passionate about trying to find practical ways in which the food system can be shifted and we're interested in things which policy makers can do, local authorities can do or municipalities and what businesses can do. And what we try to do is bring evidence into those conversations, convene people so they can share ideas and try and make the case for change really powerfully so that people get inspired to act. And I think that's why we found today really so energizing because there's been so much conversation about some of those really practical things that are going on. And you've certainly inspired us and given us ideas for the rest of our work. But most of the work that we do at the Food Foundation is, is focused in the UK. But obviously today has been a, a really international moment. And the journey that, that led us to this point um, began with a rather incredible woman who didn't want to take the stage today, but she, you all know her in the beautiful red dress here, Charlene. Um, Charlene Milu, who, has, who actually came up with the idea in the very, very first place where she so, said to me, wouldn't it be interesting to think about connecting Birmingham with another city where there might be a cultural connection and where we could start a joint conversation about how do we go on this journey together. And I, I was really excited about that because I'd been, before I, I started leading the Food Foundation, all of the rest of my career I was working on in international development. So very much focused on how we can help to tackle undernutrition in some of the poorest parts of the world. And I was then thrown into a UK context in a new role thinking, and suddenly realising about all these food problems that were here right on my doorstep in the UK. And I was kind of excited by the thought of, well, you can have a very different conversation, a real kind of partnership of equals where you've got different places in the world grappling with some of these very similar problems in very different contexts and actually problems which are not easy to solve. They really need clever ideas from different, con you know, people with different backgrounds that might approach these problems in different ways and therefore inspire one another to think differently about them. And that was what was the, the genesis, really, of the partnership with, with between Birmingham and Pune, which led this partnership that we called Bindi, and which was the, really the predecessor to the food cities 2022 um, network. We secured some funding at the time for from DFID and the Tata Trust, for which we're, we're very grateful. And, and DFID that became FCDO has continued, continued to fund the works. And, and I think what we tried to do with the Food Cities 2022 network and the platform and all the resources that Florence, my colleague, I can't see her here instantly, developed and the webinars that we held with you all as we tried to really create some of that um, synthesized evidence and an opportunity for interaction with one another so that these conversations could develop and the, the connections could start to be made. So thank you to all of you who, who were involved in all of that. Um, however, none of it, we wouldn't have even got off the starting block with any of this had it not been for another woman that's here tonight. Um, her name's Paulette Hamilton. Um, she's sitting here in the front row. Is going to take the stage in just a moment. Um, she's recently handed the baton to Councillor Khan, who we heard from earlier on today with a fantastic speech. But Paulette is really the, the mother of all of this work um, and, of course, of the wider body of work that we're going to talk, hear about in Birmingham, which we've also been very privileged to be, to be involved with. Um, she's now fighting the good fight in Westminster as MP of, of Erdington 
and we're with you all the way on, on, on that. Um, and Paulette, we'd love to hear from you about your reflections on the journey so far and, um, and where, where, you know, your ideas for the future on this. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Let me start by scratching, scrapping the speech that I've written <laughs> because I can't read this speech. I'll give you a little joke. Um, since going into Parliament, the stuff that I've now got with me, the first thing they always say is, Paulette, please follow the script. <laughs> follow the script or you will get yourself into trouble. Well, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> right? I'm going to do it again. Let me be honest with you. Four years ago, Anna and Shaleen came to see me. At the time, we'd got um, Adrian Phillips working with us, and they posed this project to me. And I said to them, I don't know about this. And um, we talked a little bit more, and I just got excited, excited about the fact that we could twin Birmingham with another city and this uh, and we could do some really interesting work about food poverty but on that journey as we started we st I started to realize we had a problem in Birmingham itself we didn't really need to go to Pune to see the problem that we'd got here and I remember when I went to India um, Shaleen and Anna will tell you I never ate for about three days, so I nearly collapsed because I just couldn't eat the food. So I struggled, and at the one event we were at, because it was those of you that travel with the council or do anything, people think you're on a jolly, it's a nightmare. It's absolutely <laughs> relentless. And then they put you back on a plane. So um, to cut a long story short, we went to, bit to um, Pune, and we had this, I think it was about five days of relentless work we had to do but I've never looked back I've never looked back and the Food Foundation and Shaleen and Anna and their team and, and Anna's team they were phenomenal because what then happened we came back to Birmingham and Adrian left us and in walked Justin Varney. Now, me and Justin, it's like mother and son. We have our good days and we have our bad days. But no one knows when we've had a bad day. Unless he upsets me too much, then I may tell somebody else. But I very rarely say anything. But he knows I love him. He knows this. And when Justin came, we set him a number of targets. And he kept saying, Councillor, that's just too many. And I remember going down a street. I can't even remember what country we were in. And I said, I think it was France or somewhere. And I said to Justin and to Anna and to Shaleen, I said, just tell me what you want me to do, but I want it delivered. And you know something? We could not have got where we've got to today without the drive and passion of the officers that stood behind me. I was there as the figurehead. We knew that we had an issue with obesity in Birmingham. We knew that we needed to be more on the, the, the centre stage. And the more I gave them to do, the more I challenged them, the more they delivered. So this afternoon, I want to start by thanking the team that were around me at the time, because without them, we wouldn't have achieved this. So we started off by looking at some of the work that was going on in Pune. And Anna will remember this. I remember the first time I saw uh, Uber Eats in, 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 do you remember, in, 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 in Pune, I nearly died. I didn't even realize that, 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 that Uber was in Pune. So that was the first thing. <laughs> then the fast food structure, I realized that even in third world countries, even though, would you say Pune was third world? I wouldn't say it was third world, but even in other countries like Pune, how rapid the fast food market was growing. Then we did a little project um, where we had to walk along the Soho Road, I don't know if you guys remember this, and look where we could find healthy food. Now there was fresh food on Soho Road, but if you didn't know how to cook it, it, meant, it, it didn't mean anything. And what we found was that our young people, our families in this city couldn't cook the food, even if 
the food was put before them. So no matter what they saw, they could not prepare it. So they went back to the fast food, £1.25, chicken and chips or whatever it was. So we embarked and then Justin said, councillor, I'm going to apply for us to um, join the um, obesity um, trailblazer. I said, Justin, you're doing too much. He said, leave it to me, councillor. We will get it done. So we joined that party. So once we joined that, I then said to him, why aren't we involved in COP26? <laughs> Justin, why are we not involved in COP26? And he said, I said, because food, food poverty, and this is joking aside, food poverty in Birmingham was something that I was incredibly shocked by. The, you know, over 40% of our young people live in poverty. They have no food. The food poverty is vast. So, we needed to do some work relating to a strategy. How were we going to pull the strands together to ensure that um, what we were doing was just not talk? So what we then did was, and I'm talking about our journey very quickly, what we did was Justin embarked with his team on a food strategy. But in the meantime, we started the consultation, which I think then we went into lockdown. So that was held up. We then started, I said to him, Justin, I want to be back on that um, Milan food pack board. He said, councillor. I said, Justin, don't tell me, councillor. <laughs> that is what I want. And as per usual, we managed with the support of people like Shaleen and Anna and Justin and Lloyd, to be fair. We managed to get the votes that we needed for me to sit on that board. Now, I've only got five minutes and I talk too much, so I'm about to shut up. But what I'd like to say is, Miriam, you have inherited a fantastic team, a fantastic group of people who absolutely are passionate to see change. I wish you every success in the future with this project. Please don't believe going to, is it Rio or wherever we're going next, is going to be a jolly. Because I am telling you, you are gonna wish you were at home with the twins, okay? But really enjoy this journey. Birmingham deserves it. Birmingham is the place I love. It's the place I grew up. It's where I truly want to see change. So I'm saying to you, this afternoon, I'm here to just say, continue on this marvelous journey. Please do not be afraid to ask for help when you need it, because there are some really good people in this room that will support where they can. But always remember, the citizens of Birmingham come first, and they deserve the best. So please, do me proud, and well done, and congratulations, and thank you all. We're going to share with you briefly because I know you want to get up to the reception to um, join us in watching the celebrations tonight. And uh, we thought we'd share with you a little bit of our journey on developing the food strategy. And it really is our journey. Um, one of the things we learned from colleagues across the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact when we talked about food strategies was do not sit in your office and write this. If you write a strategy based purely on the evidence and the science, you will fail. You need to be out with communities. You need to be out talking to people. More importantly, you need to be out listening to people and understanding the role of food in their lives and the way that they experience your city through the food that they eat. The food that they eat, the food that they buy, and the food that they throw away. And it's really important to us that we've thought about this, and this strategy has been, I think, very much co-written, and I'm really pleased that there are members of the partnerships that work with us. And it's fair to say there have been some really touchy conversations during this journey. Not everyone agrees on everything, and that's okay. There is no one simple, <laughs> single, single simple thing that is going to make the food system work. And that's what makes it a lot of hard work and a real challenge to get right. But it was also what makes it so exciting as a space to be working in and to try to make a difference. 
When we think about why, why are we doing this? Why does this sit with public health for a start? In many cities, when you talk to them about who's leading their food system thinking, it's done either from an economic generation perspective or from an urban planning space. It's not done from a health perspective, but we started our food conversation from a health perspective, initially from obesity, but then as the more we understood actually about the role of food in our lives, it's not just whether people carry excess weight, it's also about high blood pressure, it's their risk of dementia, it's their bone and muscle strength. Food and the way that we relate to food is in the top three causes of ill health across the world. When you look at the food factors combined in terms of the causes of preventable disease, and that's everything from depression to dementia, food comes out number one, next to smoking and physical inactivity. Yet you think about the narrative we've had across the world on tobacco control, we don't quite have the same passion when it comes to trying to get the food system in the right place. So we came at this very much from the perspective from a health perspective and a broad health perspective and getting beyond the conversation of obesity. But underpinning it was the voices of citizens. And one of the very early pieces of work that I inherited when I first came to the city three years ago was focus groups with families from some of our deprived communities who were saying to us, you know what? We know our kids are fat. You don't need to tell us that. We know, we buy their clothes every day. We know what it's like. We know when they sit crying and talking to how they're picked on and bullied. We know that. But you are not making it easy for us to try and help. Because every day we pick them up at school and we walk down a high street which is full of fast food, high fat, high sugar, that is cheaper than the healthy stuff. And we have to walk that gamut every day. And as a society, we culture them, culture them to want that food. So you're creating this obstacle course in our lives, which is making it really difficult for us to give our children a healthy diet and for them to achieve a healthy weight. So we need to shift the obesity conversation from being about personal failure into a space which we are a society which creates an environment in which it's easier to have, be struggling with your weight than it is to get to a healthy weight. And that requires a whole system solution. It requires talking about our economy, our built environment, our supply chains, the whole system. And that's very much where we got to. And when you try and put this on paper, uh, and the team have spent quite a long time with a lot of post-it notes on walls and lots of variations, they've now beautifully streamlined it. Um, and for any of you who aren't members of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact, I do want to give it a really big plug. I think it's fair to say when I started, uh, and sh I first met Shaleen, who was advocating for this, and I was kind of like, I'm not sure. <laughs> is, it re is it really worth doing? Is it going to make a difference? Um, and then she started to say, well, you know, much as, uh, and as Councillor Hamilton, or MP Hamilton said, you know, these, going to these international conferences is hard work. You're finding it today. Your brain's a bit frazzled now. Um, but actually what you learn from others is invaluable. And actually those networks that we have through the Milan Pact, the toolkits, the resources. So when we sat down to write our strategy, we didn't have to start with a blank piece of paper. Now, I think it's fair to say, and I'm sure the group will forgive me, the Milan version of this diagram is a little bit more complicated. It has lines going all over the place. <laughs> um, so we did have to distill it down for something that was a bit easier for me to understand. Um, but we weren't doing it alone. And that's the value of being part of the global network of cities in this space. It's why when we got into the food justice space in this way, we wanted to do it with other cities. Because at times this is really hard work. At times it's fantastic work. But being able to share both the successes and the failures with each other is what gives us value as a global network in this space. We are also part of the Delice network. And it's really interesting because they have very different slants. Milan is very focused on system approaches to food. Delice really talks about the value of food to culture and tourism and trade. And we're, because we're both founding members of both networks, we're working across them, and they're kind of cross-pollinating a bit at the moment, which is brilliant. So with the Milan network, we're leading thinking on the diversity, cultural diversity of food, and its value in global cities. 
with Delise, we're talking to them about sustainability and food system approaches. And although I really want these networks to stay separate because actually they have real value in their identity, that cross-pollination between them is really, really valuable as well. And in the UK, we've drawn heavily on the support from the Food Foundation. I'm very grateful to Anna, Shaleen, Florence and other colleagues who have stood alongside us as we developed this strategy and gone, you know what, there's a really good idea you could borrow from Bristol. So in so in Nigeria did this, this is a really good idea, why don't you try it here? They've taught us to be humble and to go, anyone can teach us to do something better and please do. So as we go on our journey in the food strategy, I really ask you to help us. We do want to have the best food strategy in the world, I'll be yeah, upfront on that. But I want you to want us to have the best one so that you have the best one too. That's what collaboration around this is about. So please, as you take away the strategy and the lovely goodies in the bag today, think about how you can be part of the journey with us wherever you are in the world and how we can be part of your journey as well because that's what will really make the world a better place for all of us. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who's really the brains behind all of this. Much like Paulette said, I'm the front man in this. Um, and I've also been delighted to grow a food team in Birmingham. When I arrived, food was a kind of footnote in someone's job. And we had a little bit of Shaleen's time, with a little bit of someone else's time but we didn't really have a nexus. And in creating a food team that is dedicated within our public health function, we now have a real nexus of people who are experts in this space and are really starting to accelerate and grow our approach as a city. So my top tip is if you are in the foothills of this journey, invest in a Sarah and a Bradley and a Reese. Invest in a food team because they are really money well spent and they really do make a difference. If you're gonna do this, commit to it and do it well. So over to Sarah to really talk through some of the detail. Thank you everyone. And, and I mean, it's always hard when you come after uh, Councillor Hamilton as she was and, and now the Right Honourable Paula, uh, especially when she refers to you as a son. And, and <laughs> I, I have had many calls that started with, I just want to have a conversation about how you're doing. <laughs> And I really think you need to go to bed a bit earlier and stop doing emails in the middle of the night. Um, but I want to say, first of all, that actually it, it, it is all of the elected members. It is both Paulette, it's Councillor Khan, it's the leader who I'll hand over to a minute. I am extremely lucky to work in a council where the politicians understand public health, the importance of it, and the importance of working across a whole system in partnership and the, the importance of food to our city. It's not just important for health, it is important for our economy, it's important for our sense of identity. Many of you will have heard, I'm sure today, references to the Balti, a dish that was created by migrants who came to our city. And every day new dishes are created in Birmingham by people that have come from all over the world and been adopted by the city. And I certainly feel adopted by the city. I'm going to hand over to the leader in a second to talk to you about the Food Justice Pledge. But I want to add to the story in a sense that this, this Food Justice Pledge came out of a series of conversations during the COVID pandemic where we were sharing with cities across the world how difficult it was to feed people and how challenging it was, not just because of what was going on in our own cities or our own countries, but actually this was a global conversation and a global conversation in which cities were absent. We spoke to the UN Food Security Committee, who said to us, well, it's really interesting you say that because we've been trying to talk to cities for a while, but we've got no way of talking to them. So we really want you to do this because we want this to be the vehicle through which we can talk to and engage with cities in this space. For too long, we've seen food justice being around famine. Food justice is a global issue for all of us now whether you're a high income or a low income country, whether you're a city that is saturated by fast food or you're sitting in a food desert, food security is now an issue for every citizen across the world. And that's where this pledge is really important. So I'm really proud to introduce the leader of Birmingham City Council, Councillor Ian Ward, to share with you the political leadership that sits behind this pledge. Leader. 
Thank you very much, uh, Justin, uh, for that introduction and for the work that you and your team, as described by uh, Paulette Hamilton, uh, are doing in this, in this vital area. Now, as I hope everybody in this room is aware, this is something of a very special time for the City of Birmingham. In fact, if you're not aware that this is a special time for the City of Birmingham, you may not be alive. Um, we are very much looking forward to the opening ceremony of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games this evening that will tell the story of the City of Birmingham to a global television audience of over one billion people. So as you might imagine, as I stand before you this afternoon, I am something of a very proud Brummy at the moment, and I'm relishing the opportunity to show off this city to the world as the stage is set for what I believe will be an unforgettable Commonwealth Games over the next 12 days. But like most cities, we also have our challenges. And as the households across Birmingham face up to the growing cost of living crisis, sadly, food insecurity is an increasing issue for far too many people in this city. It's been a tough few years during the COVID-19 lockdowns when people had so many other things to worry about. And at that time, around 7% of Birmingham citizens reported using food banks. Across the West Midlands, a staggering 16% of households are food insecure. And further to that, the Food Foundation reports that 8.8% of UK households have experienced food insecurity in the past month. That is around 8.7 million adults in one of the richest countries in the world. Of course, this growing problem is not unique to the United Kingdom, and according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, nearly one in three people, or 2.3 billion people across the world, did not have access to adequate food in 2020. And on current trends, the lasting effects of the COVID pandemic, the climate crisis, the global food and fuel crisis and other uncertain world events mean that without action, we're heading for a world where more and more people will not be able to access the very basic necessity of survival, food. But it is not too late to build a future where every citizen has food choices that are nutritious, affordable and desirable. So all citizens can achieve their potential for a happy and healthy life. And if you'll excuse the culinary reference, the recipe for success is collaboration. Across places like Birmingham, political and business leaders must come together to enable a collaborative food justice revolution. I say places like Birmingham because cities are at the forefront of addressing global challenges. More than half the world's population now live in cities. And it will be our great urban centres that drive new innovations in response to these challenges. The partnerships, networks and joint initiatives which Birmingham engages with, some of which have been highlighted through this summit, will continue to drive the necessary change. And the Birmingham Food Justice Pledge is a living example of the collective efforts of cities to be at the forefront of change. So I want to thank the many speakers, delegates and leaders from around the world who've shown their commitment to making a difference in their food systems and driving change in those systems around the world. I know that the challenge may seem insurmountable, but together, united, we can bring food justice to our cities and drive the food justice revolution around the world. This is only the start of an ongoing collaboration between our cities. And by signing the Birmingham Food Justice Pledge, we commit to addressing food justice by acknowledging that all of our citizens, irrespective of status, are entitled to nutritious and suitable food at all times. One of the cities to sign the pledge is our only formal Commonwealth sister city, Johannesburg. And their mayor, Dr. Umpo Falazzi, has sent us a short recorded em message emphasizing the importance of united global city action. So roll B2. Now is the time to show our collective commitment and I invite all city leaders and delegates to sign today. I know that many of you who couldn't be here in person today are in fact signing online. I'm looking forward to seeing this movement grow in the coming months with more and more cities getting on board. Those who can, 
please join Justin, Mariam and I at this table uh, and be the first signatories for the Birmingham Food Justice Pledge. Let's all of us work together to make this the beginning of a historic movement of collaboration and food justice throughout the world. Thank you all very much.